In this lesson, we're going to learn a fundamental skill that's used in chemistry called dimensional analysis. And essentially what this is, is a, a method for being able to convert from one unit to another. And so this is something that we're going to be doing quite a bit. Let's do a very quick, uh, simple math review. So let's say that we have this, uh, this math problem here. A very simple math problem, 8 times 1. Now I hope everyone knows that the answer to that is 8. Because you know that any number multiplied by 1 is equal to itself. And so we can say the same thing about this. 37.9 times 1 is 37.9. So a pretty simple problem there. Here's another one. 2.6 meters times 1. Well, it's, it may look a little different, but the, the, it's basically the same idea here. It's still 2.6 meters. Now, let's take a look at something that's a little bit different. Um, we're going to look at this fraction. We talked about what multiplying by 1 does, but hopefully you realize that that fraction right there, 7 over 7, has a value equal to 1. As does this fraction. 34 over 34 is equal to 1. So even though the numbers may be larger, as long as the numerator is the same as the denominator, the value of the fraction is equal to 1. And the same thing over here. Uh, 20 times 5 is the same thing as 100. So yeah, th this fraction is also equal to 1. And that fraction as well. 12 inches is the same thing as 1 foot. And so we can say that it is equal to 1 in value. Now, essentially what we're going to be doing in this, in this lesson is taking a value and multiplying it by 1. But the 1 that we multiply it by is going to look maybe something like this right here. So that we can change the unit that, that something is in, but we're not changing its value. Now let's try a couple examples together to see how this works. So we're going to start with this here. Convert 36 feet to inches. If you look at 12 inches equals 1 foot, uh, sometimes students will look at that and they'll just try to do this in their head and say, well, 36 divided by 12 is 3, so it must be 3. But actually, that's not the right answer. And that uh, emphasizes one of the reasons why we do this process. Uh, because by carrying out the process of dimensional analysis, you won't make the mistake of multiplying when you're supposed to divide or vice versa. Now let's see what I'm talking about here. We're going to start with 36 feet, and whenever you're given a problem like this, always write down what's given to you first. So we're going to write down the 36 feet, and we're going to convert that to inches. So that means down here at the very end, I'm going to put an equal sign and inches, and this is just something I show students to do starting out. Put a little box here so you know that whatever answer you get that goes in that box, that's the final answer. So we're going to set up a little fraction bar here. And this is where our unit uh, conversion factor is going to go. Now you start by looking at what you begin with. We have feet as our beginning unit. So we're going to have to put feet in the denominator of the conversion factor. We do that so that when we do all the, the math and the multiplication and division, this feet right here is going to be able to cancel out with this feet over here. From algebra, you know that something in the numerator and something in the denominator will cancel out as long as you're multiplying them by each other. We're converting to inches, so I'm going to put inches in the numerator. Now, we're given some information here, 12 inches equals one foot. So I'm going to put those numbers in their corresponding locations in the conversion factor. And now we have a conversion factor where we just take uh, feet and we can con cancel that top and bottom. Feet in the numerator, feet in the denominator. And it looks like we're going to multiply. And so on your calculator, you're going to take 36 times 12 divided by 1. Most of us know that you don't really have to uh, key that into your calculator. So the answer that your calculator gives us is 432 inches. Now if you've learned about significant figures, you might know that we need to round this off to the correct number of significant figures. Uh, the rule that I teach students is 
however many significant figures are in your question, so this is 36 over here, that's how many significant figures should be in your answer. So if we have two significant figures in this number, and we need to round the 432 off to about 430. And so that's just a little rule of thumb. We're going to assume that one foot is equal to exactly 12 inches. And so those are exact numbers. And so we'll say it's about 430. Let's try another problem here. 96 centimeters. And it says to convert that to inches. So we're going to do the same thing. We start with what's given to us, 96.0 centimeters. And we're going to convert that to inches. So that means at the very end here, I'm going to put a, a inches as my answer. I'm going to put a box here. And we know whatever goes in that box is the answer. So we have our conversion factor. Can you determine what unit goes in the denominator on the bottom of this uh, conversion factor? I hope you see it's centimeters because that's what we started with. So centimeters on the bottom. And then what unit goes on the top? It's inches. That's what we're converting to. So inches goes on top. And then we put the numbers in. I always put the units in first, the numbers in next. So inches will have a 1 next to it. Centimeters will have a 2.54 next to it. And it looks like we can cancel centimeters, top and bottom. And we're going to take 96.0 times 1 divided by 2.54. Anytime there's a number in the denominator, we divide by that number. And the answer I'm getting is very close to about 37.8. So Hopefully, when you key that in on your calculator, you got the same answer, 37.8 inches. Now, these are very simple conversion factors where we only have one uh, unit conversion factor or one, uh, one step. Let's try another example that's a little bit more complex. We're going to take 819 centimeters and convert that to feet. So this time, we have to do two conversion factors. This is a two-step problem because we have to take centimeters and convert whoops convert that to inches and then take inches and convert it to feet and the process is basically the same we're going to start with 819 centimeters and here at the end I'm going to have my equal sign and feet and we're going to put a box there to show that's where our answer is going to go and we're going to have two conversion factors this time the first one where we're converting it to inches, and the second where we go from inches to feet. So in our first conversion factor, can you tell what unit goes in the denominator or on the bottom? Should be centimeters. So centimeters on the bottom. And since we're converting to inches in the first step, what goes on top? It is inches. So we use our numbers here. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. We're going to cancel centimeters top and bottom. Now we're in inches. If we were to stop right here and just do the math here, we'd have an answer that's in inches. But we don't want to be in inches. We want to be in feet. So we have to do this next conversion factor. So ho hopefully you can see what units go in this one. What goes on the bottom? It will be inches and feet on the top because that's what we're converting to in the next conversion factor. And so one foot. 1 goes next to feet, and 12 goes next to inches. And we're going to cancel inches top and bottom. And now we just have to do the arithmetic here. So in your calculator, um, I would strongly recommend that you type in 819 divided by 2.54 divided by 12. Anytime there is a number in the denominator, we divide by that number. So on your calculator, I'm hoping that you get an answer that's very close to about 26.9. So that means that 819 centimeters is pretty much the equivalent of 26.9 feet. 
Now, I know what some people are thinking. They, they look at these and they say, well, I don't have to go through all these steps. I kind of know what to multiply or divide is in my head. I, I can do the process on my own. I want to show you an example where that's probably not going to work. Let's try this example right here. Convert 482 giras to bekas. Uh, here we have a case where we're dealing with units that we're not really familiar with. This, these are units of ancient Hebrew measurement, by the way. Uh, we're going to do the same process. We're going to start with 482 giras. So you write that down. So when we're dealing with units we've never heard of before, we really need to do dimensional analysis. And don't do this in your head. And we're conver converting it to Becca's at the end. So way down here at the end, we have equals Becca's and a little box for our answer. And notice that in our plan here, we have to go from giras to shekels. That's our, our first step. And then we convert from shekels to Becca's. So it's a two-step problem. So I need two conversion factors. And so if we're converting from giras to shekels in the first step, what units need to go in this conversion factor? What goes on the bottom? Hopefully you see it's giras, because whatever we start with goes on the bottom. And then shekels goes on top, because that's what we're converting to. And the numbers are one shekel equals 20 giras. And we're going to cancel giras top and bottom. And now we're going to convert from shekels to bekas. So shekel goes on the bottom. And then we're converting to bekas this time in this step. So bekas goes on top. And it's two bekas. Two bekas equals one shekel. So we can cancel shekels. And now we're in our desired unit of Becca's, and we just have to do the arithmetic here. So 482 divided by 20 times 2. So when you key that in, into your calculator, the answer that you get is 48.2. So it's 48.2 Becca's is our answer. Now, if you've worked through these examples, you should be ready to do any of the, the fairly uh, simple uh, dimensional analysis problems that we're going to be doing in this class, in this class.